Welcome back to the fifth in a series of time-saving tips aimed at maximizing your efficiency with E4D. You know, in previous episodes, I showed you some methods that will allow you to save 30 minutes per restoration. And I mentioned in one of those episodes a new approach to giving anesthesia. Well, that's what this episode is all about. It's called the onset approach to anesthesia. You know, anesthetics, when they're packaged, they're actually packaged as an acid. And the problem with that is that whenever we administer the anesthetic, the patient's body must then raise the pH in order for the anesthetic to become active. And this takes time. So the onset approach allows us to buffer the anesthetic or raise the pH of the anesthetic before administering it, thus saving that amount of time that it would have taken for the patient's body to raise the pH of the anesthetic after administration. And the net effect of this is that we can take standard lidocaine, we can buffer it with onset, and then we can reliably begin our procedure within about two minutes. Now think about that. Two minutes between administration and onset of anesthesia. And during those two minutes, because of the new efficiency of the Evo, uh, the Nevo scanner, we can do our opposing uh, scan or perhaps our preoperative scan in that two minute time window, thus utilizing that small sliver of time for yet another productive procedure or portion of the procedure. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. Uh, we're going to go through the onset approach for anesthetic and I'm going to do a little bit of scanning and we're going to test to verify that the patient uh, can actually um, uh, achieve anesthesia in that length of time. So let's take a look at how that happens. Okay, so uh, we have our patient here, and uh, I'm going to show you how the anesthetic buffering process occurs. So this is a, a pen that allows us to administer the, the buffering material, which is actually sodium bicarbonate. Uh, and so we're going to take a standard carpule of lidocaine. As you can see there. And I'm going to insert this into one end of the pen. Then twist and insert again. And then we're going to come over to the other side and we're going to dial up the number 18, which represents 0.18 milliliters. Get in a little tighter for that so you can see it. So again, we're going to dial up 18 and then push the button like that. And now my anesthetic has been buffered. I can come back over to the other side, release the uh, carpule and pull it out and now we're ready to use this anesthetic for this patient. So what I'm going to demonstrate today is the scan and uh, beginning of the process of restoring tooth number 28. So I'm going to give this local infiltration and we're going to obviously check our time as we do this. Put your chin down just a little bit. All right, so I gave about a half a carpule, local infiltration. Let me go ahead and close. And while that's taking effect, let's go ahead and begin our scanning process with the Nevo scanner. So I'm going to scan the opposing while we're waiting on the anesthetic, and you can check the time that this takes. So we'll switch over to our scanner. And we're going to scan from second premolar to the canine. Now, I don't have a timer running in my office at the moment, but you can get an idea as to how efficient this is. So we really have everything we need right there. 
That's all the scanning we need to do. Now granted, I could go down and, and scan the preoperative um, condition of the tooth or teeth. Uh, but in this case, since it's such a simple uh, case, I'm going to just scan the, uh, the prep scan whenever I'm done with the preps. Now let's go back to our patient for just a moment and let's test the tooth with endo ice. So I'm going to spray a little endo ice on a cotton tipped applicator and we're going to test that to see if our patient is numb yet. Tell you what, first let's, let's test an anterior tooth. I want you to raise your hand whenever you feel something, okay? So we'll go over here to the central incisor. Okay, so she just raised her hand. We get a sense for how sensitive her teeth are. And then we'll go back over here to the premolar and hold it. You feeling anything? Mm -hmm. Anything now? Mm -hmm. Anything now? Uh -huh. I'm oh. All right. Good. <laughs> so that's it. All right, I've got my pre-op scan. I've got full anesthesia for my patient using the onset approach. Uh, now I'm ready to pick up my handpiece and go to work on my preparation. So let's just review what we've uh, learned through this. We've learned that this is yet another way to save a sliver of time off of our total procedural time. Now if you'll remember, whenever I started this series, I set a goal for us. And the goal was to reduce our overall procedural time by at least 30 minutes per restoration with absolutely no compromise in quality. And of course we want to improve our overall workflow and recapture profit margin for the practice when doing this procedure. And so the onset approach blends or dovetails very well within that goal because we're going to save about 10 of those 30 minutes per restoration by using the onset approach. Now think about this. If we save 30 minutes per restoration, then if we do 20 crowns per month, we're saving 10 hours of scheduling time per month or 120 hours of scheduling time per year. That's three and a half weeks out of our lives. And so we can recapture control over that time by paying attention to these efficiencies and streamlining our workflow. Now this is just an example of a case study of a, of a case, uh, crown number 31, that I did a couple weeks ago, just to illustrate the level of efficiency that is possible using these techniques. Uh, at 1.11 p.m., I seated the patient. And then uh, I use the onset approach, which is buffering the lidocaine uh, with the onset material, which happens to be sodium bicarbonate, by the way. Uh, and then at 127, I had finished my initial scans and my preparation. By 137, my prep scans were complete and my design was complete. And by about 2 o'clock, the milling was complete for the restoration. At 2.12 p.m., the patient was finished. They left the chair. And so the total procedural time was an hour and one minute. That saved me 10 minutes of scheduling time for that particular patient. But you know, that's the technical side of things. Let's talk to our patient that we had today and, and ask her the question, well, you know, what was that like for you uh, in terms of uh, the rapid onset of the anesthetic? How long did it take, do you think, for you to get numb? As soon as you had pulled the needle out, I would started feeling it. Really? Yes. Okay. Did you realize that I didn't even use any uh, topical anesthetic and did you feel any discomfort whenever I placed the, uh, the anesthesia? I did not. I had noticed that you didn't place the topical because when it comes to injections I get nervous. But um, I wasn't going to say anything, but no, it wasn't painful at all. Good, good. And how did you feel about me being present throughout uh, the procedure and not leaving the room while we're waiting on anesthetic? Did that make you feel more comfortable or, or what was your, your impression of that? It did. My anxiety level kind of calmed down and I've never been to a dentist where I had that type of care, I guess you would say. I enjoyed mm. it. It was nice. All it right. was different. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. So again, it's not just about the technical aspects of what we do, but the patient experience as well. Uh, and so with the onset approach, we can increase the trust and the, and the, uh, the experience for the patient. So again, what does this mean to us? Well, we're going to complete the process more efficiently. We're going to increase our productivity, and of course that improves our ROI. Um, and lastly, we definitely want to improve the patient experience, and with the onset approach, we can certainly do that. Uh, now, you may be curious as to how to get involved with using onset in your practice. It is available in the U.S. only, I might say, but uh, if you are interested in ordering, these are the ways in which you do it. 
And if you mention this webinar uh, during uh, the, the conversation that you have with them, you'll receive a special uh, incentive on your first kit of onset. So again, this is just one of the approaches uh, or techniques that I use in my practice in order to streamline my workflow, make things more efficient, make my patient happier, uh, and ultimately, um, you know, enjoy the process of providing great dentistry for my patients even more. So thanks for your time today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week where I'll show you yet another time-saving tip.